What's up? Meditate here. And in this video, we will be covering the muscles of the leg. So the muscles of the lower limb are divided into four parts according to their anatomical location. The first group are the muscles of the hip joint, then we have the muscles of the thigh, muscles of the leg, and then we have the muscles of the foot. So again, the muscles of the leg are what we're going to focus on in this video. And they are divided into three main groups based on their anatomical location. They are divided into the anterior group, which consists of three muscles, we have the lateral group of two muscles, and a posterior group of six muscles layered as the deep and superficial. So let's go ahead and work our way through all of these muscles starting with the anterior group. Okay, so the muscles of the anterior group are what we call the extensors of the leg muscles, because, well, they all cause extension of the foot. The tendons of these muscles pass underneath the extenso retinoculum. The extenso retinoculum are bands of ligaments on the region of the ankle, which organizes the tendons into groups, and we will talk more about this briefly when we cover the fascia of the lower limb. Another thing they all have in common is that they are all innervated by the deep fibular nerve. Awesome. Now let's cover the muscles. The first one is the extensor hallucis longus, this one. This muscle originates from the medial surface of the fibula, as you see here, and it inserts at the distal phalanx of the big toe. And when it contracts, it causes extension of the big toe, extension of the foot, and also supination and adduction of the foot. Then we have the extensor digitorum longus, which is this long muscle here. It originates from the lateral condyle of the tibia, it originates from the fibula, and the interosseous membrane, which is the membrane between the tibia and the fibula. This muscle then inserts at the middle and the distal phalanx of the second to the fifth toe, as well as the fifth metatarsal bone. And when it contracts, it causes extension of the second to the fifth toe, as well as extension of the foot. Then we have the tibialis anterior, which is this one. It originates from the lateral condyle of the tibia, and the lateral surface of the tibia, and the interosseous membrane. Then it's going to insert at the base of the first metatarsal bone, as well as the medial cuneiform of the foot. And when it contracts, it's going to cause extension of the foot, as well as supination and adduction of the foot. So that was the anterior group of the leg. Cool. Let's now do the lateral group. The lateral group consists of two fibular muscles that originate on the lateral surface of the fibula. Tendons of both muscles run behind the lateral malleolus under the superior and inferior fibular retinoculum. Again, it's formed by the fascia of the leg. And they're both innervated by the superficial fibular nerve. Alright, so the first one is the fibularis brevis, which is this one. It originates from the lateral surface of the fibula and inserts at the base of the fifth metatarsal bone. Its function is flexion of the foot, as well as pronation and adduction of the foot. So that's this one. Next we have the fibularis longus, and the fibularis longus covers the whole lateral aspect of the leg. It originates from the fibula as well, both the head and the body of fibula. And it inserts at the base of the first metatarsal bone, and the medial cuneiform on the plantar surface, as you see here. So once it passes behind the lateral malleolus, it goes on the plantar surface and attaches to these two bones. And then its function is flexion of the foot, as well as pronation and abduction of the foot. So that was the lateral group. Now let's go ahead and turn the leg around and cover the posterior group of the leg. The posterior group muscles are divided into the deep layer and the superficial layer, and these two layers are separated by a deep fascia, or a deep lamina. And as always, we will start with the deep layers first. The deep layer consists of four muscles, and tendons of these muscles run behind the medial malleolus under the flexor retinoculum, and all of these muscles are innervated by the tibial nerve. The first one is the popliteus muscle, as you see here. It originates from the lateral condyle of the femur, and it inserts at the posterior surface of the tibia above the soleo line, as you see here. So when it contracts, it causes flexion and internal rotation of the leg. So that's this one. Then there's the tibialis posterior, this one. The tibialis posterior originates from the posterior surface of the tibia and fibula, as well as the interosseous membrane, and it inserts at the navicular and the medial cuneiform on the plantar surface, as you see here. So most flexor muscles end up on the plantar surface of the foot. This muscle is going to flex the foot, and is also going to supinate and adduct the foot. So that's the tibialis posterior. 
Then there's the flexor digitorum longus, which is this one. This muscle originates from the posterior surface of the tibia and the interosseous membrane, and then is going to insert the distal phalanges of the second to the fifth toes, as you see here on the plantar surface. It's just going to flex the foot and flex the toes. So that's this one. Then there's the flexor hallucis longus. The flexor hallucis longus originates from the fibula and the interosseous membrane, and it's going to insert at the distal phalanx of the big toe, as you see here. Its function is flexion of the foot, supination and adduction of the foot, and flexion of the big toe. So that was the deep layer. Let's do the superficial layer. The superficial layer mainly consists of the triceps sura muscle, and the triceps sura muscle is a triceps, so three parts to this muscle. There's the soleus, which is the deepest part. It originates from the head of the fibula. It originates from the soleo line and the posterior surface of the tibia. And it originates from the tendinous arch of the soleus, which is a fibrous arch formed by fascia. The other two parts of the triceps sura are located superficially to the soleus, as you see here. They're called the medial head of the gastrocnemius, which originates at the medial epicondyle of the femur and the lateral head of the gastrocnemius, which originates at the lateral epicondyle of the femur. It then inserts at the Achilles tendon, or the calcaneal tendon, which further inserts at the calcaneal tuberosity. The main function of this muscle is flexion of the foot, and the gastrocnemius muscles flexes the leg since they originate at the femur. They also help stabilize the knee joint. Then we have a muscle called musculus plantaris, which is this one. You barely see it here, but if you fade the triceps sura, you'll be able to see it better. It originates from the lateral condyle of the femur, it then passes underneath the gastrocnemius muscles, and then insert at the Achilles tendons, to then insert at the calcaneal tuberosity on the calcaneus. Its function is flexion of the foot and flexion of the leg. So that was the superficial layer of the posterior group, and that was all the muscles of the leg. In the next video, we will be covering the muscles of the foot,